infection and topical steroid withdrawal. One of the most scary, dangerous, touchy topics when it comes to TSW. Obviously, this is a huge risk when our skin is open and inflamed and weepy. But on that note, TSW um, ooze is also a normal part of it. So how do we know what the difference is? How do we know when it's serious, when we should seek help? I'm going to go through some of the nuances of infection in this video. So stay tuned. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Kayla Clark. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I had eczema my entire life until I went through topical steroid withdrawal in 2016. I cleared it in eight months, and now I am super passionate about helping other skin warriors heal their skin from a root cause inside out approach. My signature approach, the roadmap to steroid free skin includes one-to-one -one consults with me, a personalized skin plan and community healing, an online program and active growth. I really want to help you move through this process with ease and grace. So if you're interested in that, you can find more info below. Okay, infection. One of the scariest and most real risks of going through TSW is the implication of what happens when our skin gets infected. So there are a number of bacteria, viruses, fungus that can invade our skin when we are going through TSW and there are a few reasons why. I mean, mostly, most obviously is that our skin is open. Often we are scratching, we're flaking, we have open sores and this allows fissures. It allows things, it allows um, opportunity for these organisms to get in and grow. Another thing that's happening in TSW is we are massively inflamed and our immune system is dysregulated. So this means that we are already we're already trying to calibrate things, adding in another hit, if you will, another bug, another infection to deal with. Our immune system is, is already overloaded and so it won't as efficiently be able to deal with this. So this is another reason why infections are common. Let's talk about some of the different types of infections that can affect TSW skin. <clears throat> so one, is, one of the first is called ex eczema herpaticum. So this is an infection of the skin. I'm trying to move over so I can drop a picture here later. Um, eczema herpaticum is an infection of the skin with a herpes virus. So this is really unpleasant. It looks like a lot of little dots. It comes on quite suddenly. It's very painful, itchy. Um, and if you ever see anything like this pop up on your body, you should go get checked out by a doctor. Actually, I'm going to caveat this because I forgot to say it earlier, but when it comes to infection, you do not want to mess around. So always make sure that you have a doctor or someone that can physically culture, can physically look at you when you're dealing with any sort of um, question. If you think your skin is infected, always go and get it checked out. What I'm doing here is just moving through some of the common things to know to help you to help you understand what's going on. Okay, so out of order. First one, first one to check is eczema herpaticum, so herpes virus. A second common infection that can occur is staph or MRSA, um, something that looks like or what's called empetigo. So it'll look like this. Now this is an interesting one because it looks very, very similar to the topical steroid withdrawal ooze. So if you have experienced the ooze before, it can come out of nowhere often. It's like yellow, it's sticky, it might have a weird smell. Um, you can keep sopping it up and it can keep coming. Honey, it'll dry like a honeycomb crust. Now these are very, very similar explanations to a staph infection or empatigo. It looks very similar. So in this case, you know, I always uh, recommend, like I just said, make sure you have someone that can check it out and make sure you know and are in tune with your own body. So when I was going through TSW, I would get patches of ooze that would appear on my face, on my body, and they would come quickly and then they would disappear quickly and then they would move around. I learned what the signs of infection were was for me, and um, I learned what I sh when I should be concerned and when I shouldn't be concerned as much. Obviously, infection is always a concern. If you're oozing, you likely have open sores, so you again are more prone to infection. So this is just something to watch. Okay, so how do you tell the difference between the TSW ooze and an actual infection? There are signs. So this will, be, um, this will be the case for anything. If you have an infection, you will probably be more red. You might be more hot. You might notice more swelling around the infection itself and in general. So 
um, the area might be hot and red and you might be hot and red, you might have a fever. If this is the case, please go to the hospital. This is not somewhere you want to be. You might also notice just like streaks um, and other things appearing, pus, uh, general infection signs. So, you know, that's, that's really how you tell the difference. It can be difficult when it comes to infection and ooze. Um, another tangent on staph, what it can, it can also show up as folliculitis. So these also often look like little pimples or zits. They often occur on the hairline, behind the neck, on the back, and essentially this is an infected hair follicle. Again, use your discretion. These can come and go, but they can also end up being quite severe. Now, when it comes to people with eczema, uh, there is a correlation between staph on the skin, meaning there is more, there's shown to be more staph on the skin with people with eczema. Now we don't know if the staph is causing the eczema or if the eczema is, um, or if the staph is there because of the eczema, did I say that right? But it's there. So this is likely why we have more staph or more uh, folliculitis infections. We can, we are prone to more um, of that impetigo infections and things like that. Okay, another infection that can potentially um, can, can potentially show up on the skin, or these are, I'm actually going to mention a few here, and I won't go too deep into these because they're more rare when it comes to TSW, but just to be aware of. So one of them is candida. Candida shows up mostly in moist, hot areas, so like the armpits, the groin, um, skin folds, things like that. However, sweat also accumulates in this area. So when we are going through TSW and exam eczema, this can just uh, irritate the body. So yeast is actually more of an internal kind of condition. I always consult, uh, would recommend working with an internal medicine functional person that can help you identify that. And then another one to just be aware of is called tinea, otherwise known as ringworm. This shows up on the skin as like um, more circular and something called numular eczema can also show up on the skin in, in circular forms. So again, just be aware of this. Work with your doctor if you think you might have tinea or um, ringworm. It's not a worm, it's just a fungus. It's just called worm, I don't know why. This is the same fungus that causes uh, athlete's foot and jock itch actually. So just be aware of that, not as serious. But the ones that we really want to watch for are staph infection and herpes. Um, eczema herpaticum, sorry. These are the ones that are really red flags, be aware. Okay, what do you do if you have an infection and how do you prevent them from happening again? So again, if you are suspecting that you might have staph at eczema herpaticum, if you don't even know if something is popping up, oozing, pussing, please go get it checked out. Do not mess around with skin infections. Um, I will say that again, always get it checked out. After you get it checked out and your doctor has decided to either give you antibiotic ointment or not, um, I would follow, obviously follow that. Antibiotics are not the same thing as steroids. You can ask them if there is a steroid mixed in with the antibiotic. Sometimes that's the case and then just get them to write an antibiotic ointment without the steroid in it. It shouldn't affect the withdrawal process. So if this is something your doctor recommends, please follow that. It is also something you can do on your own. Other things, adjunctive care that I'd like to add in are you can use tea tree oil, always dilute this please. You can use uh, colloidal silver topically. So these things are all I'm talking here about topically, I'm not, I'm not suggesting taking anything internally. Um, so colloidal silver, tea tree oil, please, please, please patch test these before you put them on your skin because they are antimicrobial, meaning they are quite strong and your skin is very sensitive. So it becomes a point of like, how much you know how much are you willing to um to do you don't really want to hurt your skin and and my okay so we have colloidal silver we have tea tree oil i'm saving the best for last or my favorite for last at least manuka honey so really honey of any kind can be helpful honey is extremely antimicrobial manuka honey is honey that is grown from or pollinated by bees that have um feasted on the manuka honey bush, which is related to the tea tree oil, to the tea tree bush. So again, just innately antimicrobial. Honey is also very soothing for the skin, so it hopefully shouldn't be as irritating when you're using it. Now, you can get um, some ointments that have manuka honey in them. I actually don't have a favorite that I know of, so if you have one, please let me know. Um, 
and so you can find some creams i know i've seen them before but i just don't have any off the top of my mind that i know are high quality you can also just buy manuka honey on its own and make your own cream make your own poultice put it on your skin you know just be aware that that's it you're putting honey on your skin it shouldn't do anything besides make you sticky and tasty but you know maybe be unpleasant um, keeping the area clean people ask me often about uh, showering because that can be just so irritating and painful in tsw i get it that being said it is vitally important to keep your skin clean showering wiping water is the most effective way to do that in terms of like soaps and things like that I'm not picky about using soap in the shower. If you feel like it helps, go for it, or any sort of um, wash, go for it. Otherwise, just plain water is great. Um, and bleach baths are something that I was recommended to do when I was going through TSW and I had folliculitis and empatigo and all these infections that I'm talking about, um, recommended by the Western medical world. Take it or leave it. Um, this, you know, it's not a, it's not something that I found helpful. It dried my skin out um, and you're sitting in bleach, which, you know, I would much prefer doing a nice herbal bath with some herbs like thyme uh, can be really helpful. Lavender can be helpful in helping detox the skin. Um, it's colloidal silver in the bath, putting on some manuka honey in, maybe in the bath as well can be helpful to calm the skin and prevent infection. Okay, anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, you have some understanding now about the types of infections that can occur, how to differentiate, differentiate staph from TSW ooze, how to know what to do when you do get infected, if you do get infected, and then just some other tips. Okay, if you're interested in learning about the roadmap to steroid-free skin, I would be honored to help you move through this process. Please just send me a message, and if you have any other questions, comments, I would love to hear them. Just drop them below and give me a follow and share this video if it was helpful. Have a great day.